Let's go to Paradise. I have that song stuck in my head now. It's all your fault. I have the <laughs> Interspecies Reviewers song stuck in my head, and I want to sing it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Otaku Spirit Anime Cast. We are here to have a discussional. Is it? Yes, let's talk. If you say so. About the news that seems important to us, that should be important to you because it's important to us because it's important to you. But yes, and then dive into our community, answer some great questions from our community members, uh, have a lot of fun, good discussion. There's actually like three topics this episode that I think are going to be pretty interesting. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Sometimes when I think there's going to be a lot of discussion, it doesn't end up a discussion and then it's it's a flop. And Yo? Then I, and then I edit it and I'm like, you lost your chance to say, oh. I didn't say, oh. Oh, I said yo. Oh, you say, oh, yeah, you say yo at the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. We've been doing this for like, I don't know, 10 plus years, and I just, I <laughs> slipped my mind. Anyways, yes, I'm here with Chris. Yo? Now it's your turn. There you oh, go. Okay. <laughs> That's how this works. We've only been doing it for 10 plus years. But no, again, discussion podcast episode. Again, we're at talkispray.com. That's where you can go for all of our information, uh, social media links, links to our Discord, ways to support us. We greatly appreciate all those that support us. We are like, a smidge from 8k subs on youtube so if you're not sub there already shame on you you're not going to be a part of the moment that we get our placard i think it's supposed to be ten thousand. people say it's ten thousand, but i don't know I, I dream for the day that i can put a placard behind me for like two videos and then get rid of it because it's not anime related i don't want any placard behind me i don't want to be one of those people <laughs> that puts a placard behind them like it's a medal of honor <laughs> But no, I'm important. I am important. I, I'm kind of a big deal. And then I have to like put a chain on it. That way I can, you know, go to parties and stuff with around my neck and go, these people don't know I'm really special. <laughs> I'm special. 10K people sub to me on a social media platform. Uh, anyways, yes. Uh, anything going on lately? Probably not. No, no. Genshin's not fun anymore. Just doing like spamming x through story stuff and getting events done before they go away there's too many events lately i i know it's scary to say that but geez a time to get stuff done yeah i got my crown hatsune miku's around the corner she's almost here we're about to get hatsune miku the 100 year old hatsune miku character she's right around the corner there oh yeah go. and scarapooch apparently he's coming but yes we have a gundam in genshin impact now i don't know why they decided to make a gundam in there <laughs> it's, it's so stupid i'm sorry it looks so stupid. Uh, that's about it. Anything else? No. We're so boring. Yeah. We're so, so boring when we're not talking about anime. Uh, to remind everybody, for those that are fans of Mashoko Tensei Jabba's from Incarnation, I have been doing premiere releases of our Mashoko Mondays, my novel analysis of the light novel. Uh, we just got done with the recent one, which was chapter one and two of volume six, which is, yes, volume six is supposed to be the end of the first season's adaptation. And it was yet another one that was just 90% cut from the anime, which is fine this time around because it's mostly world building stuff. But there's a lot of character development and speculation that I really eat up. So if you are missing it every Monday, which is around, I don't know, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, we do a premiere so we can jump in there and do a live chat. And it's been a lot of fun the last few weeks doing that. So I'm going to keep doing that. We're going to be getting into Sharone Kingdom here soon. So if you want to be a part of that. It's not into spoilers yet, so it's good. So you can still be a part of it. But even after I finish the what's it, the anime adapted, still pop in there because I'm pretty good at talking about the, the novel. I think I give too much information, <laughs> so you'll get you'll get an idea of what's happening. But you can read along. That would be cool. We have a lot of people that are reading along. They some people are having to wait for me. Some people aren't waiting for me. But it's been a lot of fun. So definitely, yeah. Check some that. of us have just blasted through the entire story and mm -hmm. have to wait. It, it it's kind of frustrating. I mean, uh, we're gonna get into Mushoku Tensei talk again, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> um, podcast you now. started me. Um, it's, thinking about um, the fact that a lot of this world building stuff is left out, it's it's. I can see the argument um, from from maybe a yeah. Person why do you need to know that this Dragon King realm is farming rice? It technically is important based on my theories, but. It's one of those it things matter. that when you look back on it, it's like, yeah, I guess it, if you if you're going from a perspective of just reading this section, going back and saying, well, it probably isn't that important. But I like I've said to Andrew several times, everything is important. It, somebody it, made a good point in the chat this time around. It was this idea that, well, yeah, technically the anime is Rudius's perspective. And to be honest, the original writer with the Mashoko Tensei Jabba's Reincarnation novel series has been about him not necessarily being the 
the character the focus is. The, the focus is the world. Yeah. It is all the characters around him. And yes, there's a little bit of speculation there in the idea that you're not special, Brutius. And I like that. I like mm-hmm. when the main character isn't just some overpowered, I saved the world person. That's like we, we joked about with the dog, the sacred beast. It was like, yeah, they're technically saying he's not, question mark, the person that the dog's supposed to be with, which is quote unquote the hero. And I like that kind of stuff. I like that. Again, with technically with this this first two chapters of Volume Six, it sort of indicates the idea that the Man God used Rudius to get to Rajurd, and I'm like, that's a cool again speculation. It's completely speculation, but it's kind of cool that kind of stuff. So yeah, and that and that world building I think gets lost when your anime adaptation is so focused on Rudius. Rudius is, I mean, the only time we really broke away was a little bit with Paul in the in the first season. And then we also had like this brief moment of Edis, obviously with the Goblin Slayer. But even then, it wasn't really nothing in her head. It was more focused on Cliff than Edis. But still. You need to hurry up and finish the story. <laughs> right, right. Uh, when Somebody was asking if I'm going to be able to get past the season one by the end of the year. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm pretty much on par with that. It, but honestly, December's obviously very busy (laughs) towards the later part of december is extremely busy because we have the you know the seasons ending we have anime of the year stuff and then yeah reviews of the current the fall season it's it's, it's really crazy so a lot of stuff to look forward to if you are subscribed to the youtube channel and our podcast so the the stupid thing is content for you guys the stupid thing is i'm gonna have to when i get when andrew gets around to finishing up the the latter books i'm gonna have to redo the entire thing just to refresh myself so that i can actually talk to him about all this crap (laughs) he's getting all refreshed for my videos he's cheating with my videos because he gets to listen to it two times speed um or quicker speed if you're on the platforms i think i think rumble has higher speed i don't remember no it shit does there you go some fun stuff fun stuff but anyways let's let's jump in jump into it because obviously like i said earlier we have a ton of stuff uh to go through here a lot of news has popped over the last two weeks, and I think a lot of it's really super relevant. So let's start. Let's start with a big one. I, I decided to put this at the very beginning just so we can jump right into this stuff. But uh, we had like, a, I don't know, about a month ago, they were talking about this new tax system that was going to go into play in Japan. And I think the big uproar that a lot of people had at that time was because this tax system was supposed to be a way that you ha- every time you invoice for like freelancers and stuff, they had to submit that to Japan or the the government. And the problem that came from that is that you, whenever you got invoiced for something as a freelancer, you had to put your actual real name on the stuff. And the big concern that was coming at the time was around VTubers and, yes, uh, a lot of mangakas and writers that use pen names would have to submit their actual real name. And so there was a privacy concern there. Obviously, a lot of people, especially VTubers, they're playing a character – They don't want people to know that their real name is and be able to look up their face and everything like that. They want to keep that anonymity because they're creating a character. Interestingly enough, I don't remember hearing anybody really talk about the implications of the tax itself. And that's become a huge issue recently. Uh, Or at least a a lobby group was created to say, hey, don't do this. (laughs) There was a group that was actually put together that went out there. They created this um, representative from an entertainment industry lobby group in Japan held a press conference And in that press conference, um, this was to state their opposition of the new invoicing system that's taken effect October 2023. Now, in the system, freelancers and sole proprietors will lose tax-exempt status. And that was a thing that I think nobody was really talking about. (laughs) Which, yes, you can argue they should be taxed because everything else is really necessarily is is technically taxed. But what they're kind of presenting here is that it's going to cause a big issue because this is a... It makes sense for, like... I don't know, a big freelancer or a big company or something like that because, you know, they have plenty of money. They're going to be able to pay the taxes and they shouldn't get around those taxes. But their concern they're really bringing up here is that when you have some of these freelancers that are getting paid (laughs) barely anything, this is something that's going to put them out of business. So that's why the bigger discussion is coming from this is that, look, so you guys know, this is something that could technically change the entire sphere around creators in Japan. The, the particular group that was doing this press conference was claiming that 20% of respondents to their surveys claim that they feared being forced out of business due to these taxes. Rion Yukata, uh, Yutaka, who spoke during this conference, stated that manga artists will face a difficult situation as royalties are unstable. While manuscripts fees have flatlined due to long-term stagnation of Japanese economy and the recession in the pu- uh, publishing industry, 
Uh, with this change, artists will need to hire accountants and pay taxes on invoices, which will force them out of business. According to their survey, only 17 of 1,275 respondents were in favor of the voices. It's like, it's like one of those things, like, are you in favor of being taxed? <laughs> uh, so like 17 people said, yeah, <laughs> I want to get taxed. Um, it makes you wonder if those 17 people were just kind of, I don't know, friends of the parties or something like that. So they're perfectly fine. I don't know how that works. Uh, maybe they're making enough that they see it's okay. Um, the bigger picture is that, of course, that the this will severely impact manga, uh, manga assistance as well. Uh, apparently, 31% of assistants currently making between $7,000 to $14,000 a year in USD. Uh, Yutaka believes that this will make fewer people become manga artists. A scenario that will make Japan manga industry be swallowed up by foreign countries, you know, like Asia and all that kind of stuff. This is all on top of the fears of compromising individual privacy because of the invoicing requires them to submit their real names to public database. That's like another key, another key thing that we kind of noted with that. This is going to be public, so anybody can see this stuff. And this, sorry, I'm going to give you a chance to breathe here soon. <laughs> this extends elsewhere because they this panel had people from every side of the market, um, including Masuo Ueda, who is a former Sunrise producer, said that they had cited a survey that had similar results regarding the anime industry freelancers. They cited 60% of freelancers are concerned about the impact. Um, also, that one, one in four said that they were in danger of going out of business altogether. Uh, Ueda remarked, people call the anime industry a black industry. However, in recent years, the industry as a whole has been working to improve the working environment and ensure employees' status for animators. However, the reality is that not everyone can be made an employee and the importance of supporting freelancers will remain unchanged in the future. Forcing freelancers, especially animators, to close their businesses, the anime industry will be devastated in a few years' time. And that's where it's like, it's really scary, because what do we talk about all the time? Animators don't get paid well. <laughs> they're getting, they're not even getting livable, livable wages. And this will mean that those freelancers are going to have to find something else to do. Like, they're barely making it, and this is going to make them even more barely able to make it. So it really does kind of kick that... It kicks the industry while it's down, I think. And it's hard for me to really... Again, I, I understand the idea that what they're doing here, but I think what this is basically saying is that you're you're broad-stroking this too much. When you have people that are barely making much, yes, it makes it does make sense to it, but from a broader stroke, stroke, maybe the higher wages stuff would make sense. And finally, this extends as well to the voice actors. Uh, as Maya Akamoto cited results in the survey that was conducted by the uh, Voice Voice John Advocacy Group, 76% uh, of voice actors self-reported income less than 21,000. Uh, 27 reported or 27% reported that they might go out of business due to the invoice system. Uh, this of course spreads further than the anime and manga industry and representative Yoshinori Suimatsu said that 5 million people in Japan will be negatively affected by this new system. At their press release, these speakers went to the House of Representatives to participate in a caucus on reevaluating the invoice system, while Director of Planning for the Tax Bureau argued that the invoice system is necessary to properly calculate taxes under the multiple brackets. He did state that the government also considers it important to support Cool Japan and suggests that specific concerns could be resolved through a separate draft policy. So basically what they're saying is, yeah, I kind of want to keep out what we have in play, but we might, you know, we might put some separate policies into play. <laughs> Let's keep to what we have right now. Let's not modify what we have currently right now. Uh, but yes, uh, finally, the Professional Motion Pictures Workers Association Japan filed an official request uh, to the Japanese government to postpone and improve the invoice system. And that's, that's where we're at. All right. <laughs> that was ready? a lot. That was a lot more to go through than I thought it would be. When it comes down to it, um, one of the things that I learned a long time ago is um, the government likes to give you a blueprint for what they want to happen in the world and or in, in their country. So basically a government will say, these are the things that I want to focus on to make, um, make it more, flourish more. And that's one of the things that kind of cool Japan was, was did was it was, the Japanese uh, government with Cool Japan, they kind of said, this is what we want to um, uh, focus on and in encourage the exporting of Japanese culture rather than some other things that they could have gone about with. It's honestly one of their biggest 
money makers to the government itself too. I mean, it's it's a huge export. And it's one of the most unique things they have because let's be honest, technology ain't something they have anymore. Like they were making a lot of money on technology for the longest time. So I think this is one of the more booming things that's happening right now. So one of the things that they do when 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 you take into consideration a tax code, if you if you look at it, it's kind of like a map. Um, and yes, this is it. for those of you who have actually done research and you know there there is a, a certain uh, big personality who talks about this stuff. And, and I'm kind of quoting in a way what he talked about. Um, the government will give you a roadmap. These are the things that they want. And how, how do you how do you uh, quantify that? A tax is something that the government does not want. And a subsidy is something that they do want, or a tax break is something that they want. Um, so in, in effect, whether they intend it to or not, this person, uh, whoever came up with this idea, whether they were intending it or not, they are effectively setting up a pitfall for this. So they're saying, we don't want voice actors, or we don't want um, uh, manga being done. So in a way, whether you, you realize it or not, it's a tax is saying, I do not want this. If they are subsidizing it, that is them saying, I want this. Um, a solar panel or, um, or, or, or air power, when they subsidize that, they are saying, the government is saying, this is what we want. When they are taxing um, carbon, they're saying, we don't want that. So th take it into consideration. That's what they are doing. Um, the 17 of the 1,000, they probably know the loopholes and how to get around a lot of these things. So they don't care if they get taxed more because they're not having to pay that. That's the way this is all set up is they are teaching people this is what we want. I think that's the, the scary thing about it is that it, it being such a broad stroke, it kind of affects everybody. And it's, it's one of those things where they're kind of pointing out the idea of 5 million of the just standard people in Japan are going to be affected by it. It's one of those things where you're not allowing growth. And a lot of that kind of tax breaking stuff sort of helps that growth. And if people are in the lowest of the bucket, they don't have the opportunity to catch their legs. Like they were kind of mentioning with the idea of a lot of these, you know, freelance animators, they're like, okay, well, I just want to get into the business. Okay. I want to be a freelancer. I'm going to get paid really low. That's fine. But eventually their hope is they can eventually get to those point where they're an anime director or an animation director or something like that or a key artist and they can get their foot in that door finally and become a full time employee or get the better pay. And this is like one of those moments where it's like can't even get in the door. I mean, what happened? What happened with the whole situation with Isekai Uncle? They were literally fighting to find animators. Now, granted, again, there is rumors that that was because their studio was not treating people properly. But that aside they were struggling. And I can imagine right now, especially with how many shows we have every single season, it's going to be more and more difficult for them to find people that are willing to do that because like this whole system here, they're, they're going to be struggling even more. Now, I don't know what that tax percentage is. It could be a small amount. It could be a large amount. Um, I'm not real. I didn't really get a chance to actually look into that, but it is obviously a fear to stifle that. And I think this is, we, we, we usually don't get into politics because you know, we're, we we talk about anime and people just want to hear talk about anime. They want to get away from the, the politics themselves. Um, but this is something that people should keep in mind because this directly is going to affect the anime industry and the manga industry. And so people should be aware that if down the road they don't put something into play and it does in, impact things, you know, there's a chance that in a year or after October of next year, we're possibly going to be talking about how, hey, this is why we have 10 shows a season now. <laughs> Is because nobody is nobody's working in the industry anymore or whatnot. Um, there's it, it's not going to happen, but there's a side hope that that is something that could possibly make it to where they do start paying them better because they're not going to be able to get people otherwise. Um, but it is a cause and effect, and it is it is kind of scary. And obviously, you do hurt for people that are struggling for money. And there's no way to kind of avoid that. But I do think that's an interesting way to put it. Is that that that's probably what they're mentioning right there. I mean, <laughs> having them mention the idea that, you know, hey, we're going to we're going to draft something separately and that'll cover you. That's probably what they're talking about there, that they don't worry. We're going to put something into play that protects you and allows us to still take a lot of money, <laughs> still still take a lot of money. Um, but it, it is scary. I mean, again, that's kind of similar to what we were talking about, the picks of thing. It's like it's always in the end. Somebody with power 
choosing what goes and what stays. And that could definitely be there. That could be there. That could be what they're going for, like you mentioned, whether they mean it or not, or they're intended or not. It could be what they're going for. So crazy, crazy stuff. But um, we'll we'll see where it goes from here. But I'll I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for it because it's it's obviously like I said earlier, it's, it's technically a really huge deal when you're talking about. You know, 27% of voice actors saying they're going to go out of business. Uh, a quarter of people in the anime industry, um, mainly animation, probably uh, freelance animators going out of business. And what was the other, what was the other number for Mangaka's? Um, was it 37%? Yeah, 30, 30, 31% of assistants at least going out of business as well. So, no, that was the pay. Sorry. 20%. Twenty percent said they might go out of business for mangakas. So yeah, or at least the manga manga industry. Crazy stuff. I hope I hope for the best. I really do. It's one of those things that you just kind of you sit back and you and you look at it and you're like, you're you're saying one thing and doing something else, but that's kind of normal. I mean, and that's 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 totally politics in a nutshell. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and and that that's the thing is they when like you were saying i mean we try to stay out of politics but literally politics is in in getting itself into everything so when it directly affects it yeah it's hard to not talk about it so yeah let's talk about let's talk about other politics uh the official website of kankali season two announced that the fourth episode is delayed until december 15th (laughs) i swear this show doesn't exist (laughs) it's never gonna exist they got they got (laughs) It took them well, what, five I years. Guess it's, I guess it's good that I didn't go ahead and bother to to catch up on that show. It took five, what five to seven years for them to get a season two out, and then when they and it's only going to be eight episodes, and they already delayed after three episodes. I swear this show doesn't exist. Um, as per usual, they cited the reason is due to production circumstances, like they always do. So, I don't know, maybe we'll see a tweet later talking about what the hell's actually happening. Um, it's not the most visually pleasing show ever. I mean, there, there's a couple good shots in there, but... And a lot of woof CGI. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, moving on, some really cool news. High Dive has announced at Anime NYC that they have acquired the rights to Ashinoko anime. So, that's really exciting. That's a really huge win for High Dive, honestly. Uh, for those that don't know, that's the idol anime slice of life drama or whatever it is. That uh, was written by the mangaka for Kaguya-sama Love is War. So, really looking forward to that one. I've heard nothing but high praise about it. So, I'm excited to see that at least High Dive picked it up because I want High Dive to keep fighting. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of fun because uh, half half of the shows that I'm watching this season are on High Dive, and the other half is on the other place. So, the other place. Jeez, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> But no, they, of course, this is something that has not gotten an official announcement for its premiere day. I think where people were speculating spring, but yeah, 2023 is when it's going to be airing. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, they did announce some winter shows, which included Spy Classroom and Surune second season. So they got that Kyoto animation show. That's huge as well. And I think there's a lot of hype around Spy Classroom. So we'll see how that one goes. But good on High Dive. Keep in the fight. We don't, don't want to lose you. We need we need competition. You keep the competition in. Uh, there's a lot of interesting discussion around that whole aspect of the competition between High Dive and Crunchyroll. And it's like, it's sad because, you, you know, you can cite how Crunchyroll has like tens of millions of, of subscribers. And unfortunately, High Dive is maybe pushing not even half a million, if anything, maybe 300,000. And it's like one of those aspects of like, I don't know that they'll ever get to the millions as High Dive because they don't have the big sh- the big shonen. So that that is where you're going to get the millions because there's a lot of people that only watch Attack on Titan. They watch Bleach. They watch One Piece. That's really all they're watching. And High Dive, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Um, though, like I said, I, I kind of had this slight wonder if there was a possibility of getting Bleach on High Dive. That would have been absolutely insane if AMC just dropped the dough on the table just to go, we want to be relevant. We need Bleach. <laughs> We're going to put it all down. But no, it was... It was Disney. It was Disney. I I, I hope uh, it, this is just um, that they've gotten things together, um, but it seems like they haven't been having as many problems. I don't know if it's because of the 
the hump of the beginning of the season or if um, if they've actually gotten everything fixed up. Um, so hopefully that's good. Good news is that it seems like they're not having as many problems as they were. So you didn't don't not getting those maintenance errors and junk anymore. Not as much. I still have to log in all the time, but at least at least everything's running fine for me on browser. <laughs> so, yeah, fix that login, please. Uh, there was a couple of people that were like, I don't have that problem. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing, but I, I've tried it on multiple browsers, <laughs> multiple computers, and it's always the same issue. So and I hear way too many other people with the same issue. So I don't think it's just me. Um, it's good to know that you're not alone in your frustrations of a platform. Moving on, we have during the Gridman Universe Showcase event, a teaser trailer was revealed announcing a March 24th opening date in Japan for Gridman Universe film. So next year, Universe Gridman, Gridman Universe film will be coming out. So uh, Gridman the Thighs, as I like to call it. Thigh, thigh Man. There you go. Grid, grid Thighs? Grid Thighs sounds funnier. We'll go with that. But no, I, I hope hopefully that one doesn't take too long to come over here. I'm, I'm really excited to see how they kind of technically merged the worlds uh, because unfortunately one was really good for me and the other one wasn't. So it's like, how do you merge that <laughs> into a sandwich? <laughs> how do you merge that into a sandwich? Uh, I'll, I'll just enjoy half the film. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, moving on the Japanese time or Japan times has reported NHK has asked Netflix to suspend distribution of all two, 22 of its titles on their website or their streaming platform. After Netflix announced the launch of its advertisement-supported sub-tier, Japan Times said Netflix made a statement saying Netflix or Netflix. Uh, Netflix made a statement saying NHK had previously agreed on uh, to ad-supported streaming. However, NHK had complained the ad-supported service was not what it had assumed it to be, and that Netflix did not explain the service to NHK until just before the launch. Uh, under NHK's policies. Uh, it's inter internet related standards forbid licensors of its content to distribute their content um, if there is a possibility of creating a misconception that it is recommending or advertising a certain product or service. And that's kind of what I was assuming was happening when I first heard about this whole situation. Um, I think early on they were just saying NHK is like, get your stuff off your platform if you're doing ad supported stuff. And it was kind of a little bit of a question mark as to what that was about. And it's like, well, yeah, I can see some of these companies, because they can't choose what ad you're placing onto their products, they get really particular about it. Because, I mean, to, to do some crazy over-the-top example here is if one of NHK's shows is on Netflix and you go to click to watch it, and then an ad comes up for, I don't know, uh, underarm spray, and they're like, but we don't like underarm spray because we like to not have our pit sprayed. We don't like that, and it seems like you're you're suggesting that by clicking on our show, you we support that. It's a really, I mean, for us because we watch so much ad supported stuff with like YouTube and stuff like that, we kind of assume that that's not the case. Like if somebody watches one of my YouTube videos and an ad comes up for underarm body spray, they know I'm not saying, "Please buy this underarm spray." We kind of assume that it's YouTube saying it because they bought ads uh, placement. So it's it's kind of one of those weird things where. Now, there could be something else in play. Maybe NHK wants to take their stuff off the platform, I know, and this is an excuse to do that. Um, or they want a bigger cut. That's a possibility as well. Uh, but at face value, that's what they're saying. And if you want to take what they're saying at, you know, for truth, that's kind of what I would assume is, is happening there. It's one of those things that I, I, I kind of can understand. I mean, there... <sighs> There's this weird conundrum of the ad issue. I mean, um, they lately it's. I mean, us in the West, we've been effectively looking at it completely backwards. Now it's the ads are um, are are. Uh, it's the debate is whether or not the ads are supporting the the show that they're they're tied to, um, and whereas it used to be flipped the opposite, where you would use the personality on the show to advertise an item so it, um you would have mario come out and say hey i'm i'm mario and i drink a uh, nesquik uh uh chocolate milk uh, and and so we have this kind of flipped backwards on on who is supporting what 
And some people, I mean, me in particular, I do actually separate the two. I I guess it it's kind of like Andrew was mentioning the the whole the idea of YouTube is pretty much destroyed all 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 expectations of what um, ads are and literally um, and and I get mad I get really really ticked off at YouTube anymore I'm I'm so sick they can make sure I get that freaking ad but. Those those videos, whatever I am giving my time to watch that freaking ad for, I can't get my daggum video. But darn me if they won't get that ad up. Um, <laughs> I, I hate that. It's like a random chance for Chris to complain about ads. Um, That's the only reason I put this in the docket. <laughs> I, uh, I do. I, it, it's one of those really frustrating things. I have a long time ago separated ads from whatever content that I am I am consuming it it is a it is a thing that at one point and 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 you do see that on the the people who actually have their uh have been contacted by such and such company and they put that uh they they have to uh, actually give you the ad where like Raid Shadow Legends. I seriously doubt ninety percent of the people who who have advertised Raid Shadow Legends have actually played that game. Um, and I do not. I, money, I've never played to. it, so I don't know. It could be a really freaking awesome game, but when it comes down to it, I said it again. Dang it, it made me so self conscious of saying that. What's funny about that is that I've actually gotten offers to do Raid Shadow Legends, and they actually. Most of the time, I, I guess it's probably for people that aren't like they don't have like the 10,000 plus people watching them live stream. Um, they actually go through like you have to go through a lot of loops to get that money because you have to create an account. You have to create a guild and then you have to have people join your guild. It's just like they do, make you do all these things and bring people in before they even pay you. So that's why I've never done a Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> I would just throw it up on my screen and say, hey, guys, there's Raid Shadow Legends. I'm doing an ad for it now. Isn't that funny? But it, they they make you go through so many loops now. Um, it's crazy. But yeah, it's it when it comes down to it, it I said it again. Dead gummy. When it comes down to it? Yes. The the problem is is that there should be a separation. Really honestly, my personal opinion is there should be a separation. Either the either the product is being is 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 uh sponsoring, but there is no connection between the product and the the sponsored um or the opposite. The sponsor er does, or the sponsor e does not um, condone or whatever the uh, the product. The, there needs to be a separation because when it comes, Wikta, say Wikta, Wikti, Wikti, Wikti. Make an abbreviation, Wikti, Wikti, Wikti. The problem is, is that as long as we keep doing this kind of uh, the the person who is has the ad on their their show is somehow uh suggesting that product but when it comes the yeah <laughs> oh my gosh dude. i'm gonna title this episode <laughs> <laughs> the issue is is that the idea behind a sponsor is the suggestion of that product and how do you separate those two i i honestly don't know and I, and I think that's the the thing that's probably going to come of this is this idea that they're just going to go, OK, well, you just won't have ads on your shows. That's probably what's going to happen. I, I think Netflix at some point said they were just going to be there was going to be some stuff that will not be ad supported. And I hopefully that doesn't mean that those that the, the shows that are kind of pointing out that, that NHK apparently have have ad is um, Vinland Saga to your attorney and Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan's huge as a huge loss. if That's the case. Um, but what I assume is going to happen is either Netflix goes, look, you sign a contract or it's going to come down to them going, eh, that's fine. Some shows will not have ads. We just won't put won't put ads on Attack on Titan. So when you go to watch, if you are an ad supported and you go to watch Attack on Titan, you won't get ads. It's that simple. They just they just that little toggle for that one. Play ads or not. Boop, it's not playing ads. I hope it doesn't turn into a thing that if you are ad support tier you can't access those shows that are not allowed to be ad supported. Then that would suck. But one of those two methods I can see happening. Well, three technically. Either they go, we have a contract. You're gonna, it's gonna happen, or them saying, okay, we'll just turn off ads for that. Or yes, ads won't be. But anybody that's on ad supported won't be able to view those. That's kind of what I assume is gonna go. But 
anyways, that's that's fun. <laughs> NHK just throwing shade at Netflix. That's uh, another day in business, I guess. But again, it might be one of those things where they just want to get their stuff off the Netflix. <laughs> that could be too. And HK is like, oh, we just don't want to deal with you guys no more. But like I said, it could be an aspect of them just wanting more money. And they, they see that it's been on there long enough and they just want to they want to cause a stir to get it off there or something. But we shall see. We shall see. Official website for Masamune Kun's Revenge R, the second season, uh, posted a promo video revealing a spring 2023 premiere. So right around the corner, we will get um, more of that show that andrew wasn't too much a fan of it's it is nice seeing the the promo for it it, it makes me not want to watch it even more because <laughs> it's, it's like like massive in in plying of where the route's going and one character being upset and all i can see is uh um i'll just i'll just say uh natoyama i'll just I'll, uh, a natoyama character <laughs> <laughs> this is an Atoyama character with the gigantic marshmallows on her forehead. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not... Again, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the first season. It felt way too... Um, what, was, what was the term I used last time? It was like, it just it's too abusive, I guess. It feels too too mean. It's too mean-spirited, so... We'll see. It looks like they're adding a new character, so... There you go. Add a new was, character, that makes it better. I don't know. It's been a while, so I don't know... It, they're adding two new characters or one new character. I only see this girl as being the new character. So the other the other two characters were in the first season. I know for right. sure. Like so, I said, yeah. it's been a while, been a while. So if you guys are excited to see the I was a chunky boy, made myself into a handsome knockout, and then to get the girl to like me, just to break up with her, it was my life goal. Um, I I I put my entire life existence into just getting together with this girl, just so I can break up with her. There you go. It's coming back in spring. <laughs> it's a stupid idea for a show, but hey, it's fun, right? Um, I didn't hate it that much. I just, I didn't, I didn't like how mean it was. So, moving on, Bandai Visuals Emotion label has announced that the World Die Star will be getting a TV anime adaptation. Uh, this, of course, is a multimedia project featuring theatrical girls. I, I thought that when I seen the visuals on this stuff, I was like. It looks like a PA Works show, and it's not PA Works. It's like I think um, Lursh, Lursh, Lursh show. Very, very pretty looking. Lots of very pretty eyes, because anime has gotten to the point where they're super pretty with the eyes. But yeah, this is a multimedia project. An app is launching in summer as well. Uh, they've released a trailer and a key art for it. Uh, the story is set in the world after Die Star stage performers exploded in worldwide popularity in 20th century. I thought that was <laughs> I thought that synopsis was going to get real dark. <laughs> it's a different exploding. Wow. Her, uh, 60, her pupils dilated. They did dilate. I'm impressed. They have eyes that dilate now. They've they've gotten the technologies to make anime girls' eyes dilate. We have the technology. <laughs> we have the technology. We will make them dilate. 60-year-old Kokona Otori uh, follows her dream to, of becoming a world die star by auditioning for the Sirius theatrical troupe. Sirius. Like, like, the, like the constellation. So... There you go. A multimedia project um, with lots of gotcha girls, I guess. I'm, I'm going to assume gotcha girls. Exciting. Are you excited for it? You just want to see the eyes dilate. Yes, I do. Okay. I've okay. always been about the eyes, so. He's like, <laughs> it's our first impressions for the show, and Chris is like, i seen the eyes dilate, and I stopped watching. Okay, that's, that's Chris's first impressions. Uh, Shonen's week, or Shueisha's weekly Shonen Jump magazine has revealed that Dark Gathering is uh, debuting in summer of 2023. So this is the one that the manga centers on Keitaro Gintoga, who was has the ability to be a spirit medium. In junior high, he got someone else wrapped up in a spirit possession incident, and he has been a shut-in for more than two years. As he reintroduces himself into society as a private tutor, uh, he meets a genius girl named Yayoi Hozuki. Yayoi is instantly able to tell that Kitaro has the ability or the skill as a spirit medium, and she invites him to go with her to a haunted location to start their journey, capturing evil spirits. This is the one that had like the crazy key art thing where they were changing the key art every. No, maybe it's a different one. Yeah, this looks, this looks different. Yeah, interesting, interesting. We'll see. It's got a it's got a very very unique character designs. That's for sure. Um, what was the studio that was doing it? Um, OLM? Yeah, OLM. So, cool stuff, cool stuff. Excited. 
excited, Chris? Uh, footy Cootie is, is what I've seen. So. <laughs> is he Footy Cootie? Where? Uh, the director or something. Oh, no, you know it's going to be bad. They're just going to completely make it go full Footy Cootie and ignore the fact that the source material is there. He's like, I just want to make it to the Footy Cootie. <laughs> um, they're like, sure, do it. If we can make it as popular as that, sure. Anyways, the official website for TV anime, The Slow Second Life of a Retired Dark Soldier in His 30s, um, has released a new trailer, and this revealed a January 7th premiere date, so right around the corner, um, not too long, too, not too far away. Uh, the story centers on Daryl, a soldier in the Dark Lord's army who cannot use magic. Instead, he wields his intellect and initiative as an assistant to, the, uh, to one of Dark Lord's most trusted captains. But when the captain is summarily replaced, Dario also loses his privileges, position, uh, his privileged position and is fired. In disappointment, he retires to a village of humans, getting a start, a new start in life by using his ability to accept requests for help. He has the ability to accept requests for help. That's weird. It's like there's people like walk by and there's like a prompt and he's like, oh, there's a job if I can go over there and press that button. And they're like, oh, hello, fellow traveler. <laughs> you want this job? You know, I almost think it probably will. Does it, does it show any prompts on the screen? When no, I, I just, I think that would be an amusing... Uh, they show a bunch of, like, jobs going It looks like jobs on going on the screen. That would be goofy. That would be very It'd weird. be awesome. And what's weird is that I heard now Toyama in the PV, and I thought that not Toyama was in it, but I didn't see her listed in the credits, so I'm guessing that somebody just sounds really close to not Toyama. I, I think it's supposed to be the main girl, which is, if that's Viseria, it's Satoshi uh, Suro, Suruko, so... Suroka. So weird. Anyways. Yeah, so it's like um the I banished from the heroes party, all routes uh not routes. <laughs> banished from the heroes party, my next life, slow life, whatever. Um, but he's banished from the, the Demon Lord's party. And he enjoys his slow life. So I'm on board. I'm absolutely on board. It's a it, it's a it should might as well be any Sekai show. We're get, we're getting a lot of that. Where it's just, I, I like the fact that we're going back to just pure fantasy, but it has a feel of isekai, though. So, one that I'm super excited for. I think the moment that I seen this trailer, I was like, "Yes, please, yes, please, I want this show." Uh, the official website for oh, I'm sorry, the wrong one. Official website for TV anime. No, that's the wrong one. The official website for Endo and Kobayashi Live. I don't know if it's live or live. I think it's going to be live, uh, based on the synopsis. So, Endo and Kobayashi Live. The latest on Sundere Villainous Lysolette. Uh, they released a new trailer for it, and they revealed a January 6th premiere. Uh, the one day Crown Prince Siege hears the voices of God out of the blue. Apparently, his fiance Lysolette is a Sundere Villainous <laughs> destined to meet her demise, and her sharp tongue is just a way of covering up her embarrassment. The prince can hardly contain himself after discovering Lysolette's adorable hidden side. Little does he know, the heavenly be uh, beings that bestow this knowledge upon him are actually high schoolers. Can he be? Uh, can he use their divine prophecy? Let's play commentary to save the, his betrothed and avoid a bad end. We get a lot of villainous shows, and I really do like the idea of this one because it really does shake up that chemistry. Because again, typically uh, the villainous shows is. It's a perspective of the villainous realizing they're in a game and that they're going to go to their doom. And so they have to change how they're acting. This one's literally the prince being bestowed this information and this villainous being Sundete. And she looks way cute. <laughs> I absolutely love this concept. When Andrew had mentioned it before, it was like, this is brilliant. I, I love the idea of um, these these people who are playing the game actually being able to almost in a in a meta way break break the fourth wall and they're actually talking to the the um the person who's playing the or the character in the game i love that concept of how how are you receiving that information whereas normally you're, you're pushing a button and then just selecting the 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 direction instead you're actually communicating to the character i just love that idea it it it, it can Make for some interesting uh, uh, interactions, for sure. And this funny thing is, because it's it's obviously an Atome game based on the cover they're holding up. So technically, they should be controlling, like physically controlling 
the heroine character, and yet they're yelling at the prince about the fact that he's ditching his his Sundete bride, <laughs> fiance, and so it's gonna. I wonder if they're gonna get in that chemistry that itself is the idea of them being able to really. I'm I'm kind of curious if they'll be communicating as well to the heroine, and it turns in this idea of him just saving the villainous because she's actually a good person. Like all these Tomei gays end up, end up being is the, oh yeah, by the way, the the villainous is actually a good person. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds really cute. And like I said, the, the, the soon day villainous looks absolutely adorable. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. This, this is one of my most excited new properties coming in, in January, honestly. So I hope it, I hope it delivers. Cause it's one of those ones kind of similar to all the other Tomei game type of anime where it's like, okay, you got this really cool idea starting it out. Hopefully it stays, you know, interesting as it goes along. So, cause eventually you have to break this soon. Is it still fun when the soon's broke? Or is she always soon and it gets old? Who knows? But yeah, again, that's uh, Endo and Kobayashi live. Looking, It's got to be live because they're live commentaring kind of thing. But we'll see. Anyways, I, I, I guess I could have just listened to the trailer and heard how they pronounce it. Levu or Levu. I think the only one that we've really had um, that wasn't live was school live or live. <laughs> I said it. And I said it. Anyways, moving on. Pony Can has announced that The Dreaming Man is a realist light novel is getting a TV anime adaptation in 2023. They released a trailer for it, and the synopsis is, In this two-way unrequited love story, high school student Wataru Sajo is in love with his gorgeous classmate Aika Natsukawa. Aika finds him to be a nuisance, but he dreams of her mutual love every day and continues to approach her. One day, though, he suddenly wakes up from his dream. In order to get back his sense of reality, he recognizes his position and stays away from Aika. But now, for some reason, Aika is completely shaken. <laughs> oh, I, I'm like so back and forth on this one. Like, for one, she looks gorgeous. Aika looks super cute. But on the other side, it's like, this is going to be one of those. I know this is going to be one of those frustrating shows where you're like, just talk. <laughs> right? Just talk. <laughs> it's like suddenly you hear the inner dialogue saying like, oh, I love this person. I actually love this person. Talk. Just say it. It was actually uh, one of the shows recently. Uh, I I seen a moment uh, where it, it was like, oh, I so see this coming right down. I see it. it it's going to be one of those. And then they actually talked and I was like, wait, what did you do? You, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> we, had that sh- we had that in a show like two years ago. And it was like one of those moments of like, whoa, they actually they actually talked. I think, <laughs> I think we even talked about it in our review of it. I don't remember which one it was, but it was like. Oh, wow. So they actually communicated. That's see how that see how that works. Japan? <laughs> exactly. See Japan? see Japan. It works. <laughs> you just open your mouth. The mouth flaps. It's easy. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Either way, I'm looking forward to that one. Even even if I, I have a feeling that it's going to be very frustrating to watch because uh, I looks cute. Her little her little shock moment in the PV is cute. Anyways, moving forward, moving forward. Katakawa has revealed that Bullbuster franchise is getting a TV anime in 2023. Um, uh, crap. Screen, screen. Uh, this is going to be done by Studio Nut. Um, in, the, in the anime story, a young engineer named Tetsuro Okino, who has developed the new robot Bullbuster, is transferred to Hato Industries, a company that exterminates harmful animals. There, the company and its president, Koji Tajima, are up against the mysterious life form named Kyojo. As a small business that is always finding itself uh, itself short on money, Hato must uh, always account for every expense such as fuel and pilot labor, and, of course, missed shots are not tolerated. The company is always stuck between their ideals of Kyojo uh, extermination and reality of the economy. I'm... <laughs> I'm so mixed on this. It, it sounds so interesting, but so boring. Uh, it's going to probably rely heavily on the characters. Like, the characters are going to make and break this one, I think, in the end. I don't recognize um, off the quick glance of the, any of the um, seiyus, so we'll see. That one, I mean, the, the concept of balancing the book while wanting to save the world is kind of funny. But at the same time, like I said, it's like... That synopsis doesn't sound interesting at all. <laughs> it just sounds like them worrying about money. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't have we don't have like a date or anything set. But uh, it 
if I remember correctly, wasn't Studio Nut like really a rough studio? I don't remember anything that Studio. Um, let me just look up Studio Nut. Are you excited, right Chris? It's right there. What? It's all right. You already got it all the way. Well, no, it just doesn't. They, they list the the shows weird. No, wrong one. Go back. We're doing it live. Um. Yeah, like, yeah, Tanya the Evil and Decadence, that was pretty much, yeah. We'll see. There's, they're kind of a studio that just kind of is has some rough edges, has a lot of rough edges, but they do, I think, I remember, they do decent CGI. Decent. I'm not saying great. Decent. And they're probably going to use a lot of CGI for whatever machine they're, they're functioning and stuff, so I guess that makes sense for the choice of, of studio. But there you go. There you go. There you go. Moving on. Let's move on. Uh, Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. We have some updates on that one, which is another show that I'm pretty darn excited for. Um, they've revealed on their official website a new PV uh, and a reveal of a January 6th that premiere. Eye. What? Just saying. That eye. Chris is obsessed with eyes today. Chris is Chris is revealing himself as an eye fetish today. Is any of them dilating? No, it had all, it had the entire Dagum universe in her eye. <laughs> I think all of them do. They're just different universes. That one, none. That's that an that egg. fairy's got nothing in that eye. <laughs> that fairy has an egg, for and an he eye. doesn't either. So anybody that you don't see anything in their eye, don't trust them. Or they could be not trusted because they have a universe in their eye. Um, but no, it looks super cute. For those that don't know, this is the one where like in the world there's like this conflict between the humans and the fairies and a lot of bad history. And then this girl ends up getting a fairy bodyguard. And even though he really oh. hates humans, she's got to, she's got to gain his heart. Basically. Is there more universe in there? Do you see the universe? No, I, no. I was just saying, Oh, I remember us talking about that a while yeah. ago. Oh, Soka. What do you mean? Where? See, no, that's the see, dude's eye. Is. I thought you were talking about the girl's eye. It is. Maybe it's a fairy thing, except for that one fairy. Maybe if they have like human sized form, maybe they have universes in their eyes. I don't know. Anyways, side tangent that everybody's getting bored. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Sugar Apple Fairy Tale coming in January. A lot of good shows coming up in January. Um, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get a single break. We usually get a, a week break for for um, was it uh, Golden Week? Something like that. Yeah. So that's about it. A little little time to breathe. But yeah. Moving on, uh, apparently we are going to get a uh, anime adaptation of the famous movie Liar Liar. Are you excited, Chris? Liar Liar. Yeah, the official website Liar Liar Anime has revealed a new teaser promo, visual, and a 2023 premiere for Liar Liar. Um, Jim Carrey will not be starring in it, unfortunately. Uh, replacing Jim Carrey is, did they, did they announce who he is yet? Um, Genta Nakamura. <laughs> It's not that. I'm joking. It's a joke. No, what this Liar Liar, the anime, uh, which is based off the manga Liar Liar, is the Academy of, uh, the Academy X Mind Game X Romantic Comedy Story centers on the Academy Island where the students battle to determine their rankings. Hiroto Sinohara earned the highest rank ever in, uh, ever grade in his school's entrance exam. The toughest in the entire country. On his first day at school, he takes down the previous reigning queen, uh, Sarasa Sayonji, and becomes the fastest ever student to join this school's elite seven stars. Except he didn't really. It's all a lie. Now to maintain his top ranking, he must fight these school uh, fight these school mind games with lies and bluffs. He does whatever it takes to help the uh, with the help of his cute cheat maid and as well as Sayonji, who is actually a phony herself. So funny. Are we, are we getting the return of magic schools? Magic dueling schools? Is it coming back, Chris? I don't know. It kind of reminds me of uh, like a cross between, what was it? Um, Civil Fell Night, and what was the other one that was at that season? Asterisk War. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of like a cross between Asterisk War and Civil Fell Night. The girl kind of looks like the girl from Civil uh, Fell Night. But yeah, I don't know. It? it looks like it. it they're trying to mix... Uh, uh, irregular magic high and um, and classroom of the elite the way it sounds that, that you're describing it that's a weird comparison but I'll go with it <laughs> I'll go with it I'll take it uh, but yeah Liar Liar coming in 2023 
I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. I, I like to do these predictions. I'm gonna predict spring because they already have plenty of footage in that PV. So well, not a lot, but they, I mean, a decent amount. So we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes they can release those PVs really early. They like throw them together. Um, but yeah. Moving on, the official website for Sacrificial Princess and the King Beast, uh, and the King of Beasts, sorry, has released a PV announcing a April 2023 premiere. So right around the corner is our Beauty and the Beast anime. A young girl has de- re- resigned herself to being the next sacrificial meat for the Beast King, but the King is no mere monster. Love is more skin deep in this gorgeous fantasy uh, anime. <laughs> it says manga because it's from a synopsis of a manga, <laughs> but it's an anime. Um, so yeah, Beauty and the Beast. It looks cute. Um, obviously different in the idea that, I mean, it gives me a lot of vibes of, um, ancient Magus' bride, but at the same time, it doesn't look like it's about her, obviously her being some sort of, I don't know, apprentice to her or to the beast, but that bed scene looks pretty quick, weird, really weird. (laughs) I'm getting flashbacks of, uh, what was that? Um, wolf children. (laughs) You're weird. <laughs> Again, wolf children flashbacks. Uh, she looks cute, though. She looks cute. And visually, it looks it looks really decent, so we'll see. Like, not over-the-top crazy visuals, but it looks like it's pretty solid, so I think it'll be fun. I love it. Absolutely on board. And if and if that's not enough beast slash cute girls uh, stuff for you, we also have the official website for Tale of Outcasts reveals a January 11th premiere. Um, this one is Wisteria is an orphan girl living in the corner of British Empire at the end of the 19th century. Her life is de- desolate and bleak until she encounters Malbus, a powerful but equally lonely immortal being with a furry appearance, hounded by hunters. Together, Wisteria and Malbus roam the Empire, populated by humans and human-like beasts in search of a place where they can live together in peace. Sounds very much like um, Vampire Garden or Garden, Vampire Garden? Vampire in the Garden? I think it was Vampire in the Garden. They the just home. wanted to call her Wisteria. They just like the word. Wisteria? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> Wisteria sounds <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the guy looks weird. I'm sorry. That's a little bit too much in the furry realm for me. <laughs> like, I was going with Sacred Beast uh, and the King, uh, the Sacred uh, Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts because he just looks like a big lion guy. Uh, the, the whole, like, very close to human face with with beaks is weird. I think they just need they the snout needs to come out. If the snout doesn't come out for the the furry guy, it that that looks creepy. <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> that other guy looked fine because the snout was out. But the the whole thing where they have like a human like the mouth is the same as a human and the nose is the same as a human, but the rest is like a dog so, face. So ultimately, Andrew is is declaring now he is okay with wolf boys. Not okay with cat boys, but the the cats have snouts too. Not that far out. It's more. Yeah, well, it's more. But I'm talking no. about if it's got a human mouth and nose, and not a beak, it's creepy. And that dude has nothing coming out there. Anyways, so you're saying that that dude's probably a, a cat? I think he's a cat boy, and the other one. Well, I don't know what the heck's going on with the. No, he's the got the demon thing. horns he's and got stuff. The horn thing going on. Yeah, I don't. Know, he just looks creepy. He's hella creepy. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, that's that's um, yeah, January not eighth for tell of the outcast. Moving moving on before the furries get angry at Andrew. <laughs> I have not acquired taste to be that uh, they will they will disavow me. Crunchyroll, Sony Pictures, and Wow Wow have announced they are producing an anime adaptation of To Ubukata's Bye Bye Earth novel. Uh, this course is for to- for those that don't know. Toa Ubukata was known for doing moderate scramble as well as directing for a lot of stuff like I think Psychopaths. Um, it's done a lot of directing work, so yeah, Psychopaths two specifically and Fafner as well. But anyways, the novel story sitters, uh, sets on is set on the Earth where all people are taking the forms of animals. More animal stuff. We're just getting lots of animal stuff. Uh, Belle is the only girl in the world without the characteristics of animals. Uh, she sets out to discover if there are any other beings like her. Uh, Belle wields a sword and becomes involved in, with the struggles between the cities and outside world. Cool stuff. I like the character design. 
I wonder if they list who was a character designer for, or illustrator for that. Um, it doesn't list that they're part of it, and it's typically whenever you get that. If I look up here, Bye Bye Earth. Um, no, nope, they don't list it here either. Go to the it almost creator. Almost looks like almost looks like um, the original creator is Toa Bakata, but I know that they didn't do the art. I don't, I don't. Well, I mean, Toa Bakata could do the art. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that past him, but. My by Earth, meow, meow. Oh, I should light novel. Yeah, they don't list it either. Nobody wants to tell me who's the artist. <laughs> Original character design is Kim Hyung Tae. Um, they did Blade and Soul, which that is making no connection for me. So maybe it's just all in my head. Yeah, that's interesting. They don't have a date or anything set for it, but uh, we'll see. Like I said, the the character design looks really fantastic, so hopefully it turns out to be a, a solid one. Get a get a solid studio behind it as well. But yeah. Here's one I'm really excited about, and I think I kind of mentioned this on the live stream, maybe Chris picked it up or I mentioned it later, but um really excited for this next one. Website has been launched for an anime adaptation of my clueless first friend. Uh they released a promo for it and a twenty twenty three premiere. A lonely, gloomy fifth grade girl is a target of her classmates' relentless bullying and teasing. That is until a new kid arrives on the scene. Friendly Takada is a clueless as he is well-meaning. But somehow he possessed the magical ability to start drawing Grim Reaper Nishimura out of her shell. As an element as the elementary school uh, schoolers ex as the elementary <laughs> schoolers experience all fun of the childhood summer together uh, from going to the pool to picking sunflowers uh, to watching fireworks and unusual friendship blossoms. Looks really cute. Very, very unique design, character designs and stuff like that. But uh, super, super cute looking. I, I can't wait for it. Um, I think it's... Um, it kind of implies that everybody calls her, like it said in there, Grim Reaper. They, everybody calls her Shinigami. And then at some point, like, he confronts her and is like... He's excited because he thinks she's a Shinigami. So he's like, so cool, you're a Shinigami? <laughs> he's like just super stupid and super sweet. So... It sounds it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Just pretty much, I like how they portrayed that right there too. It's like it kind of gives a sense of people kind of bickering about, uh, or at least bullying her, and then he just comes kind of like barreling through the middle of it all. Um, so it could be good, really good. The artwork reminds me of uh, Gigi Gitoro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that same sense. Or um, was it the the brothers one? The 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 was it the eight brothers or whatever? Kind of has that kind of an uh, older style. To I it. guess in a way, yeah. Prater character designs. Uh, Chikas, Ch uh, Chikashi Kitakaru. Oh my gosh, that name. Uh, well, I guess it would be the original source material. It's not going to be this one, but anyways, I'm excited for it. It looks super cute. Are you, you haven't said if you're excited for it at all. You just mentioned. I like the yourself. concept. There you go. Uh, and a cute. I'm always in uh, up for a cute puppy dog love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one's interesting. Ferrano City has apparently cut the funding for the episode focused on their area in Josh and Chan Dropkick X. <laughs> and I was joking to Chris. I was like, "What was your favorite episode in Josh and Chan Dropkick, Chris?" And it was this one episode where Medusa goes like super crazy positive, <laughs> and it was the same exact episode. It was the Ferrano City one. <laughs> For those who don't know, Justin Chan Dropkick is a comedy, very slapstick comedy series. But when they did ep when they did this this season, uh, Dropkick on a Devil X, which I think is the third season, uh, they decided to like devote what was it like felt like seven episodes to just touring different cities, which is technically a part of like their tourist system they have in Japan, where you can technically the 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 city itself through taxes will pay a company and they can come in and essentially animate an anime or. They can do anything, but specifically for this case, anime, they can do like pretty much a tourism thing where the characters go in the area and talk about things that are happening in the area. And they technically fund the anime itself, uh, or at least that episode. Well, apparently, Ferrano City said, no, we're not doing it. Uh, Ferrano City's selected committee for budget audits announced that they did not approve uh, the episode. They deemed the episode inappropriate due to featuring Josh and Chan attempting to sell her organs to pay her debts. In response, uh, the official account for Justin Chan Dropkick decided to actually put out a survey and release the episode for free on YouTube so people could 
check it out and tell them if it may change your opinion of the city in a negative way. Um, obviously, for most people with half a brain, you know that they nothing to doing with that joke about selling the kidneys had anything to. It's not like she went to Frano City and said the city of selling kidneys. <laughs> Or suddenly I feel like selling my kidneys because I'm in Ferrano. <laughs> the joke for the last like five episodes or whatever was about the fact that she's in massive debt and that she's going to have to. But um, yeah, it was a funny episode, though. Yeah, it was absolutely hilarious. It was one of the uh, I, I absolutely love. I've I, I love Medusa in general. She's she's absolutely one of the best parts of that show. And she's an ATM. Yeah, she's the ATM. And when she. <laughs> When she finally just breaks down and goes ballistic, um, a, a, not not ballistic in crazy uh, destroying things way. She went she she completely flips a switch and becomes this. Um, but this was after like what um, I don't know, thirty episodes of her being pretty mellow. Yeah, and suddenly she's like super hyper, <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolutely great. I loved it to death. I, I, all the 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 jokes in that particular episode absolutely hit, and I just w- was practically rolling on on that one. So yeah, I hate that there's this kind of um, this uh, bit of controversy involved with it because it's easily one of my favorite episodes of the entire show. So yeah. Yeah, there's, and there's already a lot of people that are kind of speculating that this is probably just a political move. Like, somebody who originally approved it was um, was going to let it go through, and then somebody else who is trying to oppose them in the political system is pretty much just trying to throw shade at them. There, there could be a lot of um, issues here. It might not just be that. They're just trying to say this is our excuse for saying no, when in fact, like I said, it's nothing to do with the anime. It's just politics. But... Hopefully it doesn't affect them because I we like we enjoy our Josh and John dropkick. I don't like the fact that they're doing advertisement for locations, but if that's what they feel they need to do in order to get something adapted, it's unfortunate. But we do want them to get paid in the end, so we'll see. I, didn't, I haven't really seen any updates on this yet, so I'm hoping it it gets resolved eventually. It, it's probably one of those things where they'll they'll kick back a little bit and then they'll they'll do it anyway. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, moving on, we have director Seiji Mizushima has revealed on Twitter that there's um, there will be an event next spring revealing a new film project that will have the staff returning for Expel from Paradise. So if you're a fan of Expel from Paradise, like I am, I, I really enjoyed it. It was really, really solid. Um, look forward to that. We don't really have any information on it besides like they showed a, a brief promo, which literally showed nothing. And a design that they have chosen for the main character, which looks awfully like the main character from Expel from Paradise, with complete with wedgie. <laughs> they like that kind of design. Uh, Mizushima also revealed a. Uh, I just mentioned that it, the character designer will be Masa Suju uh, Saito. So interesting stuff. So again, yeah, if you're if you're a fan of Expel from Paradise, look forward to uh, enjoy this teaser for a announcement <laughs> next spring. So look forward to next spring is, is a case there. So did you ever end up watching spell from paradise? Yeah. 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 Cute, cute CGI soon dead action. It's always good. I think it was an interesting world. It wasn't like breakthrough new stuff, but it was, it was an interesting world. So the idea of people giving up their entire existence to some, I don't know, floating, uh, spacecraft in space that, that keeps them in a virtual world kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, Square Enix has announced that Dead Mount Death Play manga is getting a TV anime. It's going to be premiering in April of 2023. Uh, they released a teaser key art for it, as well as a little promo. And the it's a showdown for the ages as a legendary hero takes on the corpse god Necromancer. But when the dust settles, something isn't quite right. In the final moments of their epic confrontation, the corpse god's final gambit shot was wholly unexpected reincarnation magic across space and time. The boy named Polka <laughs> Polka <laughs> that broke my voice. Polka Shinoyama awakens feeling not quite himself. Who could have expected that the climactic battle between good and evil would turn out like this? Ooh, CGI skeleton dude en- enjoyed that. <laughs> I know overall looks decent. It looks really decent. So it's got a nice style to it. It's just there's there's some CGI in there. It's a little rough. But yeah, 
we'll see. Sounds interesting. I, I don't know if it's implying that he's becoming like undead or just reincarnated as a necromancer or what. Um, but another another reincarnated story to to give to the the list of the growing reincarnated fantasy shows. I really do think like I I really do believe that it feels like right now, just based on releases and what we're seeing coming up and what was, has come around the corner, it really does feel like we're going away from Isekai's as the pro- predominant genre to reincarnation in fantasy world, which honestly I think is a little more easier because they could still have that whole fish out of water and you know explain the world because they're rebirthing in there, but it still gives that element of them holding some sort of previous knowledge that improves them. But um, I don't know. I, I I think I'm now it's, it might just be the fact that we've not really had that many good reincarnation in fantasy worlds um, versus we've gotten a lot of really good isekai into fantasy worlds. So maybe we just got to get that one that's really good. But so far, I'm not getting I'm not getting many of the reincarnated in the fantasy world to be very good. They're actually they seem like they're more likely less interesting than isekai's. I don't know. I don't know. Agree. It's 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 about middle of the road for me because I think um, the paladin was was doing pretty good. But that's Isekai though. I'm talking about that's Isekai true. versus reincarnated in the same world. Uh, so reincarnated in the same world would be something for those that are listening because I'm sure Chris knows what I'm talking about. Uh, would be something like the weakest crest. Um, was that? I mean, we we did have the demon uh, the demon demon lord school was was a funny one. But that's like a very rare case. Most of them that are just kind of reincarnating the same worlds end up being pretty blah. But oh yeah, we just haven't a... had the right one. And that's what I mean. I'm, I'm wondering if we're just not we're not getting the cream of the crop yet. <laughs> They're still trying to f- shuffle through all the light novels before they find the good ones. But um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, the official website for my life as Inukai's dog has released a new promo video and key art. Uh, key art featuring the main girls of the cast in uh, Mizuki's instead of their outfits. So that was interesting. They revealed also a release date of January 6th premiere on Tokyo MX as well as a January 9th on BS11. So assuming one of those is censored and one is not. <laughs> of course, the promo that's on YouTube will be the censored version. Um, I'm going to assume that the uncensored version will not feature the stickers. Because yes, that's that kind of it's that kind of show. Interesting. I'm 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 interested in it. I think it's gonna be a fun, fun, interesting show. <laughs> I I got a kick, a kick out of it because they have a what I call the um, a co guessing of a table uh, shot in the PV as well as well. So I'm interested to see that part pop up in the show because I think it's the blonde twin tails which is the one I'm most interested in obviously because. I don't have a thing for the. <laughs> Your girl. No, it's the other girl. It's the pink hair girl. It wasn't the twin tail girl. Uh I, I I can't wait for this show. I and I I, it, it's it's a rather short. And I wouldn't say it's a four comma, but it is really short. And I I went through a lot of this, and I absolutely loved it. It's just the, as far as the, etchy, it is absolute <laughs> like a slow motion. It's absolute uh, chef's kiss. I it, it's fantastic, and I can't wait for it. I really wasn't, can't. Wasn't uh, didn't High Dive? I think High Dive announced they were they picked this one up. If I remember correctly. I think you said so. And, I, and again, was... I will assume it will be the censored version. Do not expect High Dive to get the uncensored version. And again, that's not necessarily their fault. I mean, it's not. Most it's, of the times, it's kind of exclusivities. The 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 Code Geass uh, uh, moment is probably as bad as it really got. I don't think I can't think of anything more if for a lack of a better term, uh, more hardcore than that. So if that is as far as they <laughs> the go, um, I don't, I don't see that if there's really not much to worry about. If, if, if you're on that border, as far as things that you want to see, there you, go. there you go. Exciting stuff. That, that was, uh, our reporting from, uh, Chris, who's, uh, did some great reporting and journalist work and looking into that for us. I'm glad we could get the little insight into what's to come. And our last bit of news, I found this extremely interesting. and I kind of jumped on it, of course, to give you guys a little update here for those that have missed out on all this information. Um, we, of course, had in, what was it, July, I think it was, Right Stuff had announced they've been acquired by Crunchyroll. So they went under their wing. And I think about that time we were mentioning the idea that, obviously, in order for that sale to happen, 
Sean Kleckner handed over the keys. For those that don't know, Sean Kleckner is like the the what was he what do they call the um, Dark Lord Sean Kleckner of right stuff. I think that's his official title is the Dark Lord. I'm Sean pretty Kleckner. sure that's what he had on his on his profile. But um, yes, he of course had to have handed over the keys, and I am pretty sure that he pretty much went over there and showed Crunchyroll the the buttons that he presses on a daily basis, which is. From what I've seen, a lot of buttons because that dude just kind of handles, again, technically running right stuff, running Nozomi Entertainment, um, getting archives and information for all the project that he's working on. He does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And so he's got a he's got some big shoes to fill. And we, of course, speculate at the time, don't really think he's going to stick around for long. I mean, he's obviously handed over the keys. He's sold the company. And there's no reason for him to really stick around. And we've kind of assumed that he'll probably find some other stuff that he wants to do, other projects. We even joked about the idea of hoping that he goes off and opens up another right stuff <laughs> and becomes a competitor. <laughs> um, but no, we finally got pretty much a full, uh, everything but a confirmation at this point that he is retiring. Um, and that was through a email that uh, right stuff had sent out that was revealing their holiday season plans. They revealed a lot of things in here, including their days that will be closed, days that will be open, holidays. Uh, moving their staff to be working Monday through Fridays instead of and having weekends off, um, as well as kind of talking about, of course, their their sales coming up, which obviously is a big deal. Which, by the way, side tangent reminder for everybody: if you're looking for another way to support us, if you're looking at buying anything and during the right stuff holiday sales, uh, please go to atakispear.com under the support us tab. There is a button that you can use, which is an affiliate link, and whatever you purchase during the holiday sales. We get, uh, we essentially tells them that we sent you, and that way we get a cut of it. So it's another way that you guys can support us if you're already buying stuff from Right Stuff. Moving back, <laughs> moving back. Um, but in this email, they specifically said, "Some of you may be wondering about Dark, the Dark Lord's plans in the future." Well, I have, we have it on good authority that he plans on spending a good deal of time relaxing in the no, not so distant future. So, if you would like to shower him with your gratitude for bringing your favorite products over the past 35 years. Uh, we are certain that he would enjoy cars or letters from you. They can be sent to our mailing address to make sure uh, this will ensure if he sneaks off, this ensures that if he sneaks off, <laughs> we can still get these notes to him. So like I said, I mean, yes, he could be taking a vacation, but it seems like that's more implying that he's going to be leaving, not necessarily, you know, coming back. So that's, um, I mean, it's kind of a sad, sad day for right stuff I've, I've always really enjoyed talking to sean kleckner i think he's a fantastic dude to talk to he loves anime and he pretty much built right stuff as a a fan to get to sell the fans kind of like we're we were talking with um uh peter uh peter from peter Payne from j list is that similar feeling of somebody that started out of loving something and they created something to supply the fans and honestly it, it kind of it was a huge impact seeing that Crunchyroll had bought right stuff. Kind of feel like that's going to be kind of ripped out of there, but is that's kind of the death nail is is seeing that the the heart of what made right stuff will probably be moving on here soon. So, best of wish to the luck of, of to right uh Sean Kleckner. I mean, I wish him the best if he if he's done and he needs to take a break, all the better for him, but it's still it's still a sad day, honestly. For sure. I uh, it, it it's it's uh, one of those pillars that that you see kind of shifting out of the 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 stack um and you you kind of hope uh for the best in in a lot of these situations crunchyroll i i tried to to work with crunchyroll a long time ago as far as purchasing stuff from them and i never much cared for it um and Ooh. so it, it, it we hopefully got some new information coming out from chris here well, I I ordered a whole bunch of stuff from them at the when they first opened up their um their their retail side and, and one of the downsides is is they did uh, to save costs they would do the the shipping sh- through the um the what is the freaking boats anyway I I didn't care for it it take it would take like seven months to get uh, a, something that you could order from somebody else in in a couple of a uh, couple oh, of oh you mean pre ordering figures and stuff yeah yeah that that's pretty much everybody but ami ami is that that problem like even tokyo otaku mode has that problem where they like and they even crunchy rolled it too they would like they're essentially setting up pre-orders for people to buy figures and stuff but they're all doing it the same way where they they pretty much container it all and it so it ends up taking like what like a month or two months after the figure releases 
unlike where if you were to buy it directly from Japan, like AmiAmi or something like that, they're essentially putting it into, you know, DHL or, or U.S. Postal Service to ship it directly. Whereas, again, to- Tokyo Takamo, Crunchyroll, and Right Stuff are all doing this thing where they, yeah, <laughs> you're waiting for a container to go across the seas. <laughs> you can, like, check out the tracking for it, and it's this little dot that's going across the ocean. <laughs> you're like, where is it going to get here? It just slowly, and then you see this hurricane coming by, and all of a sudden it gets knocked up north a little bit, and then it has to come back down. <laughs> Oh no, the hurricane move! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm watching my tracking, <laughs> and then the hurricane gonna hit it. But yeah, that 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 was my pretty much my experience with Crunchyroll, and so I I it, like I said, they're they're trying to save money uh, for the customer, and and I don't blame them for that. But it it didn't work for me, um, and I ended up going in diff- different routes from that that point on, and uh, and so it's it's in a way it kind of sucks to see somebody. Um, a, a company that that I I do really respect and and enjoyed their their presence and them being sucked into Crunchyroll, which could for my my point being is it could be a good thing for Crunchyroll and um, but in, in the grander scheme of things it sucks that a pillar of uh, the uh, anime fandom is is kind of stepping aside. He'll probably still knowing him. I don't see him like leaving the fandom and but definitely from the retail side for sure yeah yeah, yeah. crazy stuff well i mean there's still there's this, there's still the big question mark around nozomi entertainment and all their publishing titles it's like i mean will he will he take the that stuff under his belt there's also the aspect that they pretty much opened a you know a adult edgy store yeah they I'm, had an I'm adult interested store. i'm, I'm interested to see if 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 that's his direction that he and we I, and i speculated that that uh when when we were first discussing the whole in, entire ordeal is i wonder if he split that off because crunchyroll didn't want it and he's going to take over that in the future but yeah and that's my thought process there because yeah i know it has this um this one lady that's actually i think um labeled on the site itself but i mean in order to enact that transaction you have to be somebody that's deep entrenched to it and to to receive all those orders to pass them over in the system and everything probably still using the same they're probably going to still still use the same warehouse um to distribute it from it's just it's not going to be on you know their website selling it they want you not to look into the you know they don't want you to peek behind the curtain that both those stores are still in the same facility (laughs) and i'm wondering if that's because he has a direct you know stake in it as well so that's a possibility there but yeah yeah interesting again uh best of wishes to sean kleckner um good luck out there um it was great your service was was well respected by the the anime fandom my shelves were extremely packed with your stuff over the last i don't know like eight years so except for for figures never bought figures from them uh, because i kind of expected that whole issue there but everything else yes (laughs) yes Moving on, we have our community section because that's all the news. Um, hope you guys enjoy all this, those that, that new stuff. But we still have some great uh, comments from our, our community. Uh, for those who don't know, you can go to otakuspear.com. You can go to the link there for our Discord. I pretty much, I think I broke the contact us button because I got sick of all the <laughs> spam coming through it. Uh, but you can still submit questions through Otaku Spirit. Um, at, technically, you still email Andrew at, at otakuspear.com. Also, just make sure to note in there that it's a podcast question or whatever in the subject title. But um, as well as going to our Discord, again, there's a link at atalkspread.com, and you can go to the Submit Questions channel to submit your questions there. Um, we, I think we're needing some more, so get to work. But anyways, uh, I did get an email from somebody, and I, it, I very much so appreciate it. Um, I might end up doing something with this later on, but they didn't want to be named because apparently they don't want to be associated to us. <laughs> but they call themselves Kawaii Little Helper. Uh, they said, hello, Andrew and Kurisu. Um, I just wanted to thank you for the 100 hours of uh, worth of content you two have provided the world. I can't put in the words how much uh, uh, how much light the anime cast has brought into my life in difficult times. I bet there are many more listeners who will vouch for this. Uh, the relationship between you and your brothers is something truly worthy of envy. Now, I don't know how eager you guys are to um, open to random files and random podcasts from random podcast listeners, but here are some of the best Taku Spirit moments I've entered while listening to the show, or encountered while listening to the show. 
Uh, I've mainly gone through uh, the news discussional episodes, and I really haven't listened to any of the previews, reviews episodes yet. So there's probably more funny moments buried under all those episodes. Also, I unfortunately couldn't find where SAO ex girlfriend or bit origin came from. <laughs> I don't know. Me and Chris were talking about that. I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I'd assume that it happened around um, either the late second season or maybe third season. I, I want to say it's around Alicization, though, because at some point it's like suddenly I don't know where everybody hated it. It was like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> Again, the ex-girlfriend joke. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I And I and I had mentioned that I think it was probably born of a conversation um outside of the podcast and then we started just referring Probably. to the ex-girlfriend um mostly because of the fact that it like like andrew was saying it, suddenly around the elicitation time frame um everybody kept referring to sao as like it was just generally known that everybody knows that sao sucks yeah wait <laughs> wait 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 hold on when when since when did we decide that it sucks i mean well, okay, yeah, there's there's writing problems. Okay, I, every show has that. I mean, I, find me the perfect show um, outside of Kiwani, and um, we will uh, <laughs> we'll discuss that. No, it it really is when it comes. Uh, the issue is that people at some point made this random decision of that, and. It's it's funny because you can keep going into it uh, into shows in the future and and it's like I can actually see this one being the next ex -girl girlfriend. I it, it it's it's fun to amuse yourself in the idea of everybody will think it's a great show until randomly everybody decided that it was always a bad show. I, like I can see Chainsaw Man being that at some point, some random yeah. point, somebody's gonna come yeah, up some and say. Point. It will be. Terrible. I think it's a, the worst show ever, and this is the reason why. And give you an entire list of reasons why it was the worst show ever. And if they do it well enough, everybody will jump on the bandwagon of deciding that it it was always a bad show. And Attack on Titan is going to face the same thing. Yeah, and I think it's going to be partly filled by the fact that people didn't like the ending. But it's crazy stuff. But no, two two uh, quiet little helpers comment. I do want to say. Um, it means a lot to us to hear that at least our content has brought light into your difficult times. I've actually had a couple people here recently, especially since I, I was talking about, you know, what was it two episodes ago? I was talking about the idea of moving forward, never looking back and not letting your mistakes weigh down on you, learning to not let things be your focus. And it, it seemed to have touched a touched a, a nerve for a lot of people and i i loved hearing from people saying that that you know give them a little bit of help with their issues they were facing and that's a good thing that's that's one of those those great things that makes what we do a positive thing because i mean when we initially started the podcast it was about bringing positivity into the anime sphere uh, being positive about the shows we're talking about not bashing things and just being positive about everything in general that way it helps people see positivity in things because obviously Issues happening in the world. People go through difficult times. They're facing difficult times and have us at least bring some light to that. It means a lot to me because that's, that's what we want to be. Um, honestly, I'm not going out of my way to try to be an inspirational speaker. It's just what I think um, sometimes I feel like people need to hear. And obviously, um, I I would love to everybody to know that listens to us that we greatly appreciate you guys. We appreciate your support. We appreciate that you guys listen to us, that you share our content help us with algorithms by commenting and liking. Um, but in the end, I hope that everybody knows they're special, um, mainly because not just the fact that they, you guys help us out with this stuff, but that you are special in the end. So it's good to know that that is at least coming across to you guys, that you enjoy our content, and um, it means a lot to you guys. So it means that we're doing something right, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean... Somebody we... likes us, Chris. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I absolutely love, um, having this community of friends that I've, that we've built over time. And I absolutely enjoy, um, chatting back and forth and, uh, bickering about silly things that then in the grand scheme, things don't really matter. Um, but when it, it, it's things that we're passionate about and I really love doing that. And, um, especially if you can come away from those, those, those fun little bickers with, liking each other afterwards not 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 turning her and and that's one thing that i absolutely love about our our community is um the the fact that we can 
have those fun bickers. And, and I mean fun bickers where you just toss out a silly thing of, of it's, uh, your your wife is the is is the best ever or or the worst ever and here's my waifu and I love having those kinds of discussions and but when it comes down uh, so can, we, we can, we can, we can, I can't can, do, I, I say, do it <laughs> I I love having those hey hey side tangent can you start can you start criticizing him for saying um. <laughs> Cause then at least it'll help me. <laughs> I can get him to stop saying, um, I don't have to cut out as much content whenever I'm editing. <laughs> no, I'll I've still do it. I'll it. just, I, every time I, I do it, it'll it. be, it, it'll just drive me nuts. Exactly. The, be conscious about it. Yeah. I become overly conscious of it. And, that, yes. and that's going to derail everything. That's how I fixed my problem with the ums. <laughs> now I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> at least you didn't say um i i love our community I, and i really I, do truly don't do it the right way please i love our community there you go <laughs> he he loves you as much as his cute girls doing cute things shows that he always does uh i love this show <laughs> this uh, sounds like that actor i love this show anyways that's crazy um we got a little bit too doki doki please don't be creeped out we're not we're not actually yandere don't worry about it but again, what do thanks, you mean? Thanks, Why, are they looking at somebody other than me? I will say, I will say, I do want to use those files. I've already listened through them, and me and Chris were laughing like crazy listening to the stupid. I, it, I was, I was looking for the one where it had Chris doing the horse voice um, sound effect, and that was the one I found, and I was happy to see that was in the list. Horse, <laughs> <laughs> horse. <laughs> um, no, I'll put them off the side, and then. Maybe probably sometime early next year. We're going to be do. We're going to be doing. For, we're going to be due for a updated meet the hosts, and I think it'd be really great to throw those in there because that's honestly something we've been looking for a while. Because we have a lot of people commenting, say, "Why don't you guys do like a best of moments?" And it's like because I don't have time to look for them. <laughs> and it was my hope was that like somebody out there is like, well, that's the problem. It's like if I make a bunch of pics of our favorite our best moments yeah that's like not, me saying like oh my gosh i'm, I'm so funny, funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like here guys here's a clip of all of our funniest moments that i found because i'm so funny <laughs> and and granted there's a lot of that stuff that i'll well, find out i'll laugh at it and then suddenly i post it up there and everybody's like these aren't funny these are your best moments no i need somebody else to say no this was funny so which for the longest time early in our podcast series, we had a lot of people that thought Chris's weird, stupid voices were funny. That's why a lot of those clips are those. <laughs> we had a segment of time where we had somebody in the community or some people in the community that were like, just make weird animal voices. I don't care about your your takes on anime. OK, Chris, we're doing another voice. Do they do the monkey voice again, Andrew? OK. But no, there's a lot of good ones in there, though. There's a lot of really funny ones in there. Um, but yeah, I was I would kind of hope that we had because I. It's not so much that we we think that we'd be able to find the Sao ex girlfriend um, origins in there. Definitely could probably find Icoon in there around the El Noah time. But the the thing about that one is that I think that the first moment we brought it up on the podcast, it was probably really funny. Yeah. So it would probably happen to find that early moment. Like I said, which would probably be somewhere when I think season two or season three came out. So maybe I can find it. I don't know. It's kind of a staple in our in our community, so we might need to find it. <laughs> but no, like I said, I'll put it off the side. And then hopefully whenever we do another meet the the host recap one, I'll just put it like on the end of it. So might people need can get to, a sense of us. Might need to make another uh, Otaka Spirit uh, dictionary like we had on the on the forums. Oh, yeah, we did have that, huh? So if everyone will know what we're talking about when we say Brick's character. Yep. Um, Icoon, um, Damn It Roberts. Um, what else? I, I don't know. Maybe we can get Ira on that. If Ira listens to this episode, um, Ira's like off and on whenever he wants to listen to us. So. Maybe if Ira listens to this, <laughs> what they can do Ira doesn't listen to us. Every now and then, Ira pops up talking about like criticizing things that I say. I think it's whenever there's something in there that Ira knows more about it than I do. Ira will finally watch or listen to the episode. Like other than that, Ira never listens to us. It's like there's a, a spidey sense. Ira's like, there's something I need to correct. I need to listen to this episode. And they listen to it and they go, actually, glasses up. Actually, just joking. <laughs> I love Ira. Ira is like our, our our bestest community member, just putting together a whole bunch of good stuff. Which, by the way, 
right now we're doing we're I think we're into EDs. We might be going done EDs. We might be moving into something else as of listening to this, but we are still doing our anime of the year picks. So if you're not a part of the Discord, jump in there and um, go to the anime awards, Otaku Spirit Anime Awards channel. Um, pretty much right now we're going on two to three day three day cycles for each one. So every two to three days they're switching to something else um, to vote on. And you just pick your top five and submit them. So we still have to do, we won't be doing fall and um, anime of the year until like the beginning of January. So if those are the most important for most people, probably (laughs) you can, you can jump in there and give your nominations. So good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. But yeah, thanks. Thanks to Ivra for all they do for our community. It's good stuff. So. What are the questions that we have? What are the questions we have? Saw says, are either of you car guys at all? I have a feeling this is going to be a low-key funny question. If you could only have three specific cars for the rest of your lives and can't drive anything else, what would they be and why? Mine would be 2018 Dodge Ram 2500 diesel. Last year of my favorite uh, body style and would be um, before my family and towing. Late 1990 Toyota Supra. My Japanese choice when it comes a uh, case of zo- uh, Zoomies. Zoomies? Like, like you, get, you get a case of the Zoomies? Oh, you have a case of Zoomies. So, yeah, that's, that's right. I'm stupid. Uh, S550 2016 to 2020 Mustang Shelby GT350. America Zoomies. So, if you want to Zoomie Zoom for Japanese or Zoomie Zoom for America, I got gotcha. you. I don't know. I'm not a big car person. I've talked in my in previous episodes about my small uh, venture into the world of street racing with a with a Saturn group, but I it, that's the weird thing. I know like our other brother is obsessed with rabbits, so if he could have like a car, whatever car, he's gonna buy a rabbit. Chris is obsessed with Dodge Neons. I don't know why. Um, for me, it's like my old cars. I don't care. <laughs> like like if if I was the same case of them too, I'd probably be like, yeah, I want my Saturn ninety six again. But I don't really. I had that moment, and I've kind of gone past it. I mean, if I had my choice, I've. When I was younger, I was obsessed with Dodge Vipers. Like, and I wanted a Dodge Viper so bad. I'm like, right. I'm gonna grow up and get a Dodge Viper. I don't know that I really need it now. <laughs> but I would love a Tesla. I just, I every time I see Teslas beating people on the strip, I'm like, I want one of those Teslas. Even though I hate the idea of a battery in a car, Me and too. I know how expensive batteries in cars cost to replace and how they can explode and overheat and charging them sucks. I just, for some reason, really like the idea of like you press the pedal and it just goes like you don't hear a rev. It just goes. It sounds so weird. Um, I've heard that test driving a Tesla is kind of life changing. That's about all I care about. I just want to try one. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> I, um, the, I, <laughs> the neon thing is only. <laughs> I knew it was, was going to be this thing where if I take a jab at him about the neon, he's like, like it's so weird. Every now and then he's like, I was looking up a Dodge neon. I'm like, why are you obsessed with that Dodge neon? It wasn't that great. I mean, it, the design's okay. I. It, but it's like, it's no, it's no like. Uh, yeah. That was the other thing I was going to mention is that I would love to have. Um, was it a Camaro? Um, was it a. It wasn't a 60. Dad wanted to build a 67 Chevy, um, and we never did. Was it a 67? It was a 66. 66? I always wanted to build that, and it was one of those things that I... It's it's those regret things. Like, you don't... Your your father, like, wanted to do this thing with you, and you, just ne- you were never interested. And then the moment that they pass away, you're like, yeah. crap, I kind of wish I did that. And I kind of... I was talking... Um, I don't know if it was you or just our other brother or together. I don't remember. I really want to one of these days do that. Like, if I can ever get, like, to the point where it's this stuff sable and stuff, or if I go do something else, I would love to one day build that with my brothers just as like an homage to our father because we never got that chance to build it with him um it would be really cool we'd probably it, suck though <laughs> without him without him there it's gonna suck it, we have to find somebody else to help us do it i i when when i seen this this question a while back when um a, a I, while back <laughs> Yeah, has it been that? It's been a while. I'm sorry. It's, I it's been two months. I'm sorry. I debated this in my head of how how I wanted to approach this because really, what the yes, it is low key uh, funny because of the fact that technically we're not uh, car car guys, and but we were raised in a car family. My my dad was big time Super into, into to cars. He rebuilt cars a lot. Yeah. 
And so we do have that fun, uh, that, uh, that root, but it just never really sprouted. And so it's, it's kind of one of those weird things in, in our family. <laughs> He's underneath the car, just, you know, cranking away. And we were walking by with a Game Boy in our hands going, I don't want to get involved. Yeah, pretty much. I, the 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 66 uh it was a 66 chevelle ss 396 uh we boarded over 30 just just to give you all an idea of 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 how much uh into it that we were it it the funny thing is is that car um they had bought it originally for me and that i was supposed to um work on it and get it built up and that was going to be my car and it, at some point when i turned 16 I got the Jeep Jeep. <laughs> we made fun of it and called it the Jeep Jeep. The Jeep Jeep, yeah. That thing, um, the r- ceiling peeling down. It was, that was the one we, <laughs> that one I think we had the most memories in because that was the one we went all the way almost, across the country. Almost flipped that thing. On. <laughs> we, went, we went halfway across the country in that thing all together. And it was literally for us like this travel adventure. And then to our parents, it was just a coffin that we had. They had to sit in a vehicle for us, bored out of our minds, driving them crazy. So it has memories. We Sitting, uh, on, sitting on the back uh, tailgate eating graham crackers. After I rest stop, yeah. after I used that for a while, after I turned 16, at some point the offer was made that I would trade my dad's Camaro for the the 66 and I did it. And I love that Camaro. I I spent I, I I wiped out more rubber on every street corner than I care to admit to. <laughs> I loved that car. It was it it'll probably forever be stuck in my mind as just this kind of pillar moment. And I, for those of you who watched me on stream, they, the, the streamers, uh, the, the stream watchers got me kind of stuck into this, this story at, at some point. Um, but the Camaro, I it will probably always have a, this soft spot. The, the neon is a weird thing in the aspect of, it was my first true car that I, outside of that freaking beat up, um, squeaky, squeaky, uh, I don't even remember. It was a, your bounce car, the bounce car. I don't remember. It, it, that the one was that's just like on a pogo stick. Yeah. I, I got it for like a couple hundred dollars. So it, sound, it, it, it sounds it, like it got me around for a little while <laughs> just to give people an idea. Um, in being, a passenger in that car um the sound is like if you're in some random hotel and the walls are really thin and you know something's happening next door that's what that car sounds like <laughs> <laughs> something's happening next door um but I, I i never cared for that car the neon was one that was me when i i i became sig- sig- single and and i had a chance i went with this car and i purchased it and it was my car and so it's always going to have this kind of soft spot in my heart of that was my car. And so I've always kind of wanted because I didn't quite get the um, I don't have that same negative feeling that I have with the car that I have right now. I don't much care for the car that I have now. That neon is something that I had. It was it was it has a special place for me that I, it's my car. And so I want that again, as for my true dream car, it would probably be, uh, either the 66 or a 57 Chevy. And my dad's dream car was a 57 Chevy. He kind of passed that, um, the love of that car to me. And I really, really, truly love the 57 Chevy. It's, it's body shape. It's, it's mystique. Um, I, and so I've always kind of wanted that, but it's, I fully acknowledge that's really more my dad's dream car that I kind of adopted at some point. So it's not, is it the car that I really want? Yes and no. Um, it's just kind of has this mystique that I, er, I acquired from my dad, the 66. I really want that car. That's a freaking beast. And I want that car. <laughs> There you go. Chris is a car guy. Nobody ever knew. Um, I guess we'll call it for that. I was going to do the next one, but we're kind of running long. So 
I, I, I need to self-control. Uh, it's not sure what we're doing next week. We might do a topic that I kind of been having on the docket for the last week. Or I, I don't think we're quite yet to preview state, but I almost want to do previews early. But that's always a bad idea, especially with... I think winter's the worst one for late announcements, so I don't want to jump on that too early. What were we going to say? It was it was kind of a random thing that I was thinking of saying earlier. The the Mustang Shelby, I actually know Shelby. Uh, I had a girlfriend who um, was named after the Shelby. Now you don't. And she... Fun fact. Yeah, it was, a, it was the old time Shelby's, not the newer Shelby's. There you go. Fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> you can t- trivia. You can tell your family members at the dinner table. For <laughs> Did you singer. know that Chris from Otaku Spirit had a girlfriend named Shelby, Shelby. based on the Mustang <laughs> Shelby? <laughs> they're like, that'll Chris. that'll be that'll Do be. They, in. They're like, oh, is that the guy that has the YouTube placard for ten thousand <laughs> subs? <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be one of those things that uh, th- this person will bring out on on uh, the in a million years from now there there'll be this new version of uh the the uh Amer- what is that uh pawn sh- pawn stars it'll be the new version of pawn stars and they'll they'll bring out this uh this microphone in on the tool tips down at the bottom of the screen chris had a girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> no it'll be on like jeopardy or whatever <laughs> like the 500 point thing <laughs> what was the name of the girl, ex-girlfriend of chris from a for anime cast uh, uh ah crap i don't know <laughs> your, your answer chris from talking spirit what is this? shelby oh one of these days chris will be that will be that fo- will be that we'll famous be that popular anyways um wow this is a <laughs> kind of a cold stop. We're not full of ourselves. Kind of nothing. a cold stop. <laughs> cold stop. Anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this anime cast podcast episode. As usual, we're at talkaspare.com. It's where you can go for all of our links, social media links, ways that you can support us through Patreon, through our tips link. Um, also, if you're on YouTube, you can support us through Super Thanks, or you can apply to become a member so you can get cute little emotes whenever you... I think you would never comment on there. You can use the emotes. But uh, at least whenever you do the premiere and live chats, you can do cute little speech and uh emotes anyways uh but <laughs> otherwise you can support us is by telling other people about us hitting likes hitting shares all that kind of stuff it definitely helps us out and getting up in the algorithm I definitely appreciate everybody's support you all mean a lot to us and y'all take care oh